Big gyms are opening up, but what if you are that little gym or yoga studio that really relied on your customers that came in to your studio that are not coming back? Well, Michael R.C. is here with us to give us some insight on about reopening successfully. You uh, know firsthand about, uh, of course, gyms, because you used to own some, Yeah. and now you're consulting. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we've been working with uh, thousands of gyms over the last few years, and uh, yeah, they're definitely taking a hit right now. I think more than 40% of the gyms across the country have pretty much gone out of business. Yeah, and, and the reason why, of course, is that they put guidelines on that we don't know the guidelines. I mean, I know firsthand of Mountainside Fitness and talking with those owners is that, you know, they came down on stuff, but everybody doesn't know how to maneuver, and that's where you come in to help. Yeah, I mean, the guidelines are, are set, but they're a little gray. So right now, they, gyms have reopened to 25% uh, capacity, which is hard to run a business successfully that way, but uh, that's because we went under 13% positive uh, when it came to cases here. Uh, so once we get under 3%, which is a way to go, we're at 12.6 right now in Maricopa, uh, Maricopa and we're about 11% in Arizona. Once we get under 3, we can open up in full, full capacity again. So we got a little ways to go. As long as we all participate, we can accelerate that. But yeah, yeah it's very now. important. Now, we do have some video. We have some B-roll we're talking about going to the gym. It's, it's before COVID, so you're seeing no one's mask on or anything. But let's talk about going back to the gym. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are worried. A lot of people are wondering what to do. Um, I, I feel like people are kind of upset too that these guidelines are in place. Yeah, yeah, and to be clear for everyone watching, the B-roll that you're seeing is pre-COVID, right. right? So I'm not hugging and <laughs> doing all this. <laughs> yeah, it's important to note that. Uh, but yeah, there's there's definitely things that they have to be doing, um, and and the more successful ones are definitely checking all the boxes, and they're also finding a way to to be successful. You know, the, the recessions do one of two things: you're either going to see elimination or innovation, and uh, those that can innovate, you know, greatest companies in the world have come out of sessions uber spotify airbnb you know apple so and even fitness ones orange theory fitness fit body boot camp uh, i love kickboxing they all came out of recessions it's just about getting innovated not just saying how does the world bend to what i've been doing as opposed to how do i run with the way the world's running right now yeah and i've noticed some changes uh it, my gym has been making appointments kind of getting people in and watching the percentage i think that's also too people have to realize that you know gyms have a, a large capacity that they can have in there. So mm -hmm. when it cuts down to 25%, people kind of like go, well, gosh, there's still a bunch of people in there, but you gotta realize it's a little different than a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, it is. And you know, it, the, the spacing's more difficult. You know, fitness studios have it a little easier in some aspects where you can use the same equipment for each person, the same treadmill, the same set of dumbbells. So I think they have a lot better chance to not have to deal with a lot of the, the stuff there, but the, the challenge is they also have smaller spaces. So now 25% capacity can mean maybe they only have six to 15 people working out at once. So they've had to learn how to do remote or virtual training. Uh, same, same thing with options in the parking lot, retail, supplements, all those ancillary options. There's studios that are actually more profitable now than they were pre-pandemic because they've learned how to be scrappy and lean and they don't have a lot of the expenses they had when having a full staff, but they found a lot of ways to increase ancillary sales. So there's still opportunity there. There is, and this is where you come in for those that are having a, a trouble and struggling to, to get back open or to to continue on because you are a consultant. You pretty much help them out because it's, it's so overwhelming. Yeah. But you find everything they need to do, right? Yeah, and, and not only to do, but also what not to do. There's a lot of things that people are doing that's just a waste of time and you need to cut the fat right now and just focus on the meat. And uh, if you do that, you can really be successful. Um, so yeah, get, getting them in the right places with sales, with marketing, with operations, and then also uh, finances and making sure that everything is just in the right direction. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I'm so glad that the gyms are, I'm so glad of people like you who are helping through and helping us understand more about what uh, the gyms are doing stuff. So if people want to find out more, and of course, if someone is a, a you know yoga student or something right now that needs your help, how can they? Yeah, so our company's Loud Rumor, but we actually, uh, anybody that wants, we, we wrote a really good uh, printout called uh, uh, membershipsalesguide.com. If you go there, we're just giving you a whole bunch of ways to increase sales at your gym and fitness studio right now for free, so you guys can be successful today. So I like that. Michael, thanks for coming in. Thank you. So, I like it.